G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the HK416. This weapon is part of the Legacy Slayers and Toadies NI Arms HK416 mod, which adds a super highly customizable rifle into your game, complete with custom sounds, animations, and an interesting customization system. Getting right into the customization, we'll start off with the receivers, and the HK416 C, D, and N receiver, as well as the M27 receiver, I'm getting flashbacks to Battlefield 3 as well, have no performance impact on this weapon. They're generally for looks, so if you want to go for an M27 look for this thing, obviously you need to grab that. To increase the damage of this to a whopping 184, you can chuck on the custom receiver, which will give you a faster reload as well, interestingly. Next up, we've got the barrels, and interestingly with this one, you actually get more damage out of putting a longer barrel, because obviously that helps a bullet retain velocity, helping it do more damage over range, which is good stuff there, and that is also reflected by the range stat there. So, at 205 damage, this thing is just uh, screaming overpowered out, off the gate. So, what I want to do with this thing is chuck good sight on it. We'll go for a nice Eotech, because you can never go wrong with Eotechs. We'll chuck that on. Now for the muzzles, we'll go for a suppressor just to boost our damage even more using Ace Operator. There's a couple more um, suppressors down here, but a lot of these are um, actually muzzle, uh, not no, muzzle flash hiders, sorry. I was about to say muzzle brakes, but no. These actually help you out a little bit since the muzzle flash won't give you away, so you can actually get a little bit more sneakiness out of it rather than having no muzzle or a muzzle brake at all. So that's kind of neat. That's a nice little touch. Now for the grips, um, a lot of these things are just uh, retextures of the grips. A lot of the other paint mods are different because um, they're on separate attachment slots. But this one is just one of its own thing. All of the grips and their colors are in one section, which helps a lot with the clutter of the thing because there's like 40 attachment points onto this thing. Okay, maybe not that much, but you get the point. We'll go for an overmolded grip for with a factory black finish because that'll increase our stability, very nice, and we can increase our mag capacity by an additional 10, although we could go for, you know what, go hard or go home, we'll go for a 100 drum mag there, that's crazy, okay, moving on, now for the stocks, most of these are cosmetic because I've noticed that there's not a lot of recoil for this thing anyway, so what I'm going to do is just chuck that one on because it looks like an M4 stock, and then we'll go and chuck on this charging hand which increases your reload speed even more good stuff. Now, for the trigger, we've got the tactical flat trigger, and that'll increase our rate of fire tremendously. So yeah, having this, it's going to be spitting out bullets very fast, although these ones are a little bit more inferior. You might notice, however, how some of these actually require perks for you to upgrade them, and uh, these perks are received by getting magazines, and these magazines do spawn, as well as the weapon, in vendors and in containers, so yeah, if you've decided to get this weapon and make it all legit, make sure you wait two or three days or something before where, or when the shops can reset to make sure you actually have this stuff show up. So be on the lookout for those magazines because reading them will give you the ability to attach better mods onto this. You can change the barrel paint. Let's just skip all of the paint stuff because there's a lot going on already. And here's another performance upgrading thing. So if we crank that all the way up to cryptic, uh, cryptic mystic ruby man I, I don't i don't like saying that <laughs> 539 damage yep she's overpowered we're just gonna go with it and we can make our full auto fire there so now we're hitting that hard on full auto mode that's going to be insane now for the bolt release you can increase your reload speed even more with some cool attachments on the side and by the looks of these it sounds like these are all real attachments so if you're into guns in the Americas in real life then you'll be well at home with this thing. Alright let's change the handguard here. Let's go for that one because I don't need the front prong where there's a little EOTech on the front so we'll move on from that. So I ended up losing an attachment slot because this grip here doesn't have an attachment side on it which means I've lost where I'm at but luckily there's more added by the rails here. So what have we got here? We can have some... oh there's the sights, it just looks like it took it off for some reason. Well I don't need them anyway. For the lower rail, let's go for a foregrip if we can. That's a cool grip, I like that one. Although it's just standard there. Oh, you can attach it. Is that an M320? That's cool. I don't think it's functional though, it's just for looks. I'll probably attach that just for the shits and giggles, to be honest, on a different rifle. You can chuck a laser on. Make sure to attach a laser beam. Really? Okay, let's just go into the receiver. There's the laser beam. Let's make it green. Why the hell not, eh? And uh, what else have we got here? Left rail. 
sling attachment, maybe? A surefire that looks like a tactical light. Sure, let's just put all the bells and whistles on this thing. It's going to be the most tactical thing ever. It can change the scope reticule, which is Eotech right now. I should probably attach one of these things just so I know that it shows up, knowing how the laser sight needs to be um, actually selected to green. So yeah, we're going to just go for one of those. More paint mods, we'll skip over those. And I think that is about it. Again, I've lost my place, but there's a legendary effect if you need it. And I don't think I will, to be honest. Alright. I'm going to take this one into Gunners Plaza, and I'm going to create a couple others, and we'll see how we go, eh? Okay, since this weapon has decided to be overpowered, I'm going to assault Gunners Plaza of the immersive variety in broad daylight. What does this weapon look like in third person? Like that. There's a little bit of clipping going on there. Just a little bit, nothing too bad. Also, I don't know what the weather's doing. It's just got a mind of its own after I installed Vivid Weathers, but we'll see how we go. There's no recoil to speak of. You just gotta point and shoot. I'm pointing at the health bars and uh, I seem to be having a moderate amount of success. Since this thing has a suppressor, they're not really caught on to me yet. Getting sneak attack crits for like over 1k damage. I think this thing's a little bit overpowered just quietly. The fact that I can just hold down the trigger for like, I don't know, uh, a week and then get kills like this. It's um, okay, there's some balancing that needs to be had with this. But at least it doesn't make you as overpowered as it did in the first uh, iteration of this mod. Which actually made your female character's butts bigger. I wish I had the um, footage of that. But the reason I took so long to actually have a look at this thing is because it made your butts bigger. And it caused clipping. And it wasn't it wasn't very nice. Obviously not with Winter's Vault Suit. Because that thing sort of forms around you better. But for other characters, I was having um, clipping issues on the... And their behinds, which was, uh, I guess it'd be fun for some, but let's try to make, I'm, I mean, I don't want to make it too distracting, you know. I don't think I'll be using this particular variant of this weapon again, because it is making things a little bit too easy. Hey, there's one. See, that's a rusted one. That's what you'd find a breakdown for parts if you didn't want to buy a real one, which is nice. It's good that you can just get these out in the wild. Having a levelless integration is good. And I highly doubt they'll have anything close to the power of this weapon. So you won't have to worry about... Ooh, that looks really sharp. I'm used to what it looks like in Fallout 76, which obviously isn't as much. Yeah, your stealth boy ain't gonna protect you from anything. Man, I like using... Oh, not stealth boys in Fallout 76, but uh, chameleon armor. It actually does work really well because people can't see you unless they're right next to you. Which is great. Any old sucker with an explosive uh, combat shotgun I can take down easily just by crouching and not moving because they simply can't see me. I really wish you could shoot through stuff because that person is uh, sitting... Okay, same goes, Gunner Commander. You should have gotten out earlier. Then I would have made your death less painful by virtue of shooting you in the face. Alright, couple more left. Where are they? Show yourselves. At this point, they should be fleeing in terror because this is some dirty... This is filthy. Okay, there's one more left. If we can get some bats gameplay in here, I'll be satisfied with that. But I don't think old mate's going to come out. Alright, where are ya? Last mistake. She didn't even get to finish that sentence. Good on her. Alright, let's switch out of this and we'll grab something a little less powerful. This one is modeled off the M27 IAR that was in Battlefield 3. I reckon this is going to be a little bit more So fun. now we'll be using our M27, which looks like that in first person. I tried to capture the look of it back in Battlefield 3 without any attachments. We've also got one with an ACOG scope, which looks pretty good with desert camo. And this one is nice and compact and blue, so ideal for close quarter situations, right? No, put that one away. That one's bad. All right. Let's see how we go with our M27. I've had a little bit of restraint on this one. I didn't add all of the ass-kicking mods that the other one had, simply because I thought it was a little bit too cheap. Now we're back to the gunners being good and tanky, just how um, Todd makes it. This thing's got the rate of fire and the no non-recoil to take out these guys with ease anyway. It's just a matter of how many bullets I have left in the mag after I'm dealing with them, which, um, if my aim is actually any good, will be a sufficient amount, I suppose. Alright, old mate from here has decided to run down that way. We'll get him later. Quickly take out the turrets. 
And for some reason, this thing's hip fire is basically uh, pinpoint accuracy all the time. I don't have to aim down sights. So I could just dance around like this all friggin' day, and no accuracy penalty will come to my uh, come my way at all. But just watch this. If I shoot this thing, it's heading in the exact middle every single time with minimal deviation whatsoever. So you know. Yeah, there's a little bit of balance that needs to be had with this thing in the form of recoil, less power, and the damage stats. And I think um, what would be nice for this would just be a little bit of um, spread. Also, the semi-autos are like, it's like Jacob's triggers. You can fire pretty much as fast as you can damn well click, which is good. Also, this is a see-through scope, I've noticed, which, um, it's nice because the uh, animations aren't intrusive enough to make this thing less uh, usable when you're using it in semi-auto, so that's good. I noticed with a lot of the vanilla animations, especially with the combat rifle where the barrel sort of goes right in the air, if you try to use any um, form of see-through scope with that, you end up blocking your vision. That's why I never use those mods because they suck like that. Okay, I think I'm a little bit too close to be using an ACOG, but I can zero in on the head kind of easily. Oi, Captain Bridget, stop shooting me. I'm gonna die in a second. Okay. Nerd rage time. Hopefully she doesn't shoot me again. She's reloading. That's, that's a good sign. Perfect. Okay, we've got bugger or health left, but we can survive this. Also, the adaption of this is making it very invisible right now. I guess I'm, I'm blind with nerd rage, I suppose. I suppose I went back into caution there for a second and got those extra sneak attack criticals by virtue of having a muzzle break on this. I don't think I do have a muzzle break. No, not muzzle break. Muzzle flash hider. No, this one doesn't hide the flash or anything. I was just lucky with overpowered sneak perks. Okay, we are done in Gunners Plaza. Let that uh, health regen out of combat happen and have a stim pack because you're pretty much Swiss cheese with bullets in you, but that's okay. You just walk it off with your Wolverine healing powers. Also, it's a Christmas suit of the Grognak variety. Isn't that nice? So, on the way to Swan, I have seemed to have encountered a Deathclaw, which name is Diablos, which I guess means demon in some stupid language, I guess. And uh, when you kill him, he gives you a nice present. So hopefully he's not as powerful as old mate Swan or the Deathclaw that lies down in the uh, glowing sea. But, ooh, he's mutated. We'll just try to get him with this. Also, we've leveled up. That's of no consequence to me. All right, let's get some bats gameplay in here just before he headbutts us with those nasty ass horns of his. Go for a crit there. Well, it doesn't seem to be ripping me a new one right now, so I suppose I'm right. Although I am being protected by a bat's protection. Actually, how, how does he hit? Oi, come back here. Wow, he's decided to leg it. Why did they give him a cowardly AI? That makes no sense for death floor. Okay, so you're no different to any other death floor in the game. I can easily out-tank you. That's okay. So you should have on you a Hellfire custom, which is one of these. It's got... Oh, okay, that's actually really cool. All right, I guess we'll use this again, Swan. Old mate Diablos over here is uh, set to spawn anywhere at level 50, so that's when you'll start seeing him, and he'll drop you this flaming piece of weaponry. Now, I doubt the Hellfire custom will be any good, because I've only just got it and haven't had a chance to modify it, but let's see what it does. Huh. Nothing at all, apparently. Are you feeling alright? Ah! Ah, there, there we go. What is going on with this weapon? That's really weird. He seems to be on fire. We, we can't hit him. There he goes. Okay, so it looks like it's some sort of knockdown effect on him, which could be useful. But I was expecting just a little bit more of uh, the old uh, damage of the incendiary variety, which is okay. So, yeah, just like... I was expecting something like the incendiary legendary effect with a little bit of extra damage, but you know, that's that's cool I guess, we'll just continue. We'll use, use this to knock him down and then we'll switch over to something else and shoot him with that. Okay, this thing is not really effective. What I should probably do is go back and just use our drum mag overpowered thingy and then get into caution again so that we can just... Uh, <laughs> Sneak attack crit him until he dies. It'll be quick if we can actually manage to do it. Might as well shoot him now because we've got all of that base damage. 
Wow, we really don't even need to sneak attack crit him, do we? We could just do that all day and he'll be dead in a minute. I wonder how much damage we can get if we just shoot at his face. 808 damage. And probably heaps more there now that uh, I got a crit there. Thank you, Mysterious Stranger. I'm going to get thrown with a boulder and then immediately crushed by a hammer. I really don't like how you can't skip that. Also, I got launched into a shipping container. Okay, no screwing around this time. Let's just rip swan a new arsehole like that. Ha, <laughs> I did it. Do I feel like I achieved anything? Not really, but I got my XP and and lost a few bullets, but uh, we would have lost a lot more bullets if we were using this one, for instance, so... Sure, whatever, that's fine. Okay, so I've gone to Weapons Workbench and have made some improvements to the Hellfire M27, so we'll see how we do. And we're not gonna bother with the rest of the gauntlet because I just wanna kill Gerald. And uh, I've made this first and foremost automatic, which is going to be useful. But for some reason, I just can't hit him. What if I just go in bats? Surely, if I use this thing in bats, it'll hit harder, right? I don't know. I think this thing is just bugged. It's kind of like it's okay when we when we get a critical, which is a guaranteed hit. Obviously, that'll work. But uh, they don't really grow on trees, so it'll be few and far between in which I'm able to actually do damage to him. <laughs> that guy was having a seizure on the ground. That was actually kind of horrific. Maybe this thing is meant to be used like a torch. You have to be at point-blank range and have the barrel burn them instead of having the bullets actually hit them. I, I really don't know. I think the projectiles on this thing are blocked by something. Although it's not making the sounds that you'd expect a blocked projectile to make. Okay, I'm going to test something. If I fire at <laughs> get it fire now if i fire at this billboard does the bullets actually hit okay so they're actually hitting so if they're hitting the billboard it'd be hitting gerald but for some reason it's not it got to him eventually but that was like 16 bullets in i don't i don't really know what's going on here oh god i've looped the firing sound i think what we can do here to get the best damage is just crit spam, and whenever they come up, we'll have to do it. He's going to just be continuously knocked down because of this weapon's power. Maybe that's why they made it, <laughs> made it not hit ever, because they obviously didn't want it to knock down people all the time, otherwise you'd be playing the game on easy mode. It's just so inconsistent that it makes no sense at all. Screw it, this is taking too long, we'll just shoot him with this. Goodbye, Gerald. You had a good shot, I guess, but uh, you were killed by a glitchy gun. But it, it could have been a lot worse, Gerald. You know this. Anyways, I think that is a good enough idea of what this weapon is. Oh, the lens flare was cool. My player's eyes are cameras, apparently. Um, yeah, I think that just about covers it as my computer stutters and then stutters again because it's loading something in. That's why you play Fallout 4 and SSD, children. Um, yeah. It's overpowered, this thing needs to be rebalanced, I think. But other than that, the customization and... Oh my, I must have added bullets. Interesting. Other than that, the customization and the presentation of this weapon, apart from the dodgy reload, is actually top-notch. This thing is brilliant. Or so does the flashlight work. I probably didn't install a lens for it, that's why it didn't work. A bulb. Because you need to install bulbs on this when you put the sight housing or the... Um, the flashlight housing in there because of course you would right so if you'd like to see this thing in your game check out the description there'll be a link down there as far as my knowledge goes this is only on pc and it's like 700 megabytes worth of mod so i really doubt this thing will be coming to uh xbox one in its uh, current state they could probably truncate it by taking out all of those extra um, retextures of the different cameras you can put on it because texture is a little bit heavy on the old megabytes so maybe if they remove that you could possibly see this thing on Xbox One if they're fair and charitable to the lesser uh, console players PC Master Race. Thank you very much for watching guys.